And here we go. Uh, I'm so grateful to be here with you. I'm Amanda Elowash, and uh, just wanted to drop in, share on this video a little bit about the dynamics of co-creation in relationship. Co-creation in relationship. I am working with a couple and uh we've been on this for a little while and uh, i cover in my book elevation ship i cover this concept of co-creating and i'm so glad that they asked like i'm not totally understanding this because you know if my partner does something really painful uh that i don't like like how could i have created that. I didn't want it. I didn't ask them to do it. Uh, and that makes sense from a very basic point of view, but we're going to drop in a little deeper. This is a bit of a mental twister. We're going to step into some non-duality. This is an opportunity to shift our consciousness, to think about ourselves, our relationships and the world around us in a little bit different way. And that different way helps us to release victim mentality and the blame game, which sucks. And it's a no win kind of game. Um, this approach offers empowerment and hopefully inspiration to create a reality that aligns with the love that you have and want to feel more of in your heart. Does that sound good? I can't hear you. Oh, good. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to explain. Um, it, as if it's a brand new concept that's not familiar, that we're co-creating the reality that we're in, but I'm going to do my best. And I really encourage you, if you have questions, if there's something that I explain that doesn't make sense, if there's a term I use that doesn't make sense, please reach out, whether it's in the comments, whether you DM me, whether you send me an email message, whatever way you can, please always feel free to reach out to me. I love questions. There are such things as stupid questions, but you're not going to ask one of them. I know it. I can feel it. All the questions that you have are brilliant and I want to hear them. So, at the subconscious level, we're going to talk about the subconscious level. Um, we are unconsciously playing out old traumas. So um, if you had an upbringing where mom and dad were never home and it was kind of scary to be home alone and you had to take care of yourself a lot and you didn't really feel like there was anybody there for you when you needed them or some other similar experience, you might have abandonment wounding or say you lost a parent early on or there was a divorce that took you away from a primary caretaker that meant a lot to you. There are all different reasons that a, a human can experience an abandonment wound. Um, these programs, these wounds that we experience, it's like uh, that child self puts together the rationale and understanding based on that very limited childlike perception of themselves in the world around them, which often is, I'm the center of everything. I caused this, I deserve it. Uh, oh no, if I'm abandoned, I'm not gonna survive. There's all kinds of ways that a child thinks about themselves and the world around them that are limited and uh, likely inaccurate. And when a trauma happens at that age, uh, the ideas about self and the world get highly imprinted by that trauma. And those programs become like movies that, that like we hit the play button on every time that wound gets triggered. It's like we're pressing the button and that movie starts to play where we believe that we're going through basically the same experience that we did as a child the location the set may be different the characters may be different or i should say the actors may be different but we're putting ourselves through the same experience it's a it's a program that goes into action 
when they're in motion, we aren't really present with what's actually happening around us. We're running a program and we tend to translate the people, the objects, the experiences around us through the filter of that movie. And whatever can support that movie that we're playing goes in and makes us feel really certain that this movie is accurate. What I'm making up about my circumstances, this is accurate. And this is also known as confirmation bias, which we tend to all have as humans. Um, we tend to ignore and not even see, not even hear, not even uh, register the things that are contradictory. So this is why it's so important to take care of the trauma before trying to resolve a problem. Otherwise, your limited perspective and programmed behavior will only produce more of the same. Because we're, we're, we're actors in this movie that's playing out and the way we engage with other people uh, really highly influences how they show up in our movie. And it, our, playing the movie in our own head limits how we perceive who is showing up and what they're doing. So on a little side note, I'm going to press pause on this co-created reality. When I was kind of growing up and doing all this introspective work that's kind of unusual for the elementary school age that I was, I started to notice that when I was worried and or upset or whatever heavy feelings I made up um, about a circumstance that I, I started do like calculating and I started like journaling about it. And I found that I was about 90 to 98% wrong about all of the stuff I made up based on a couple of little pieces of reality that triggered feelings, all the stuff that I used to fill in the blanks to connect the few little bits of reality were almost 100% inaccurate. And that's what made me start to get really curious. Like, why would I, why am I making up such negative stuff? Why am I making up negative stuff that's always so inaccurate? That got me really curious. So that started my journey into looking at why is, why do our minds do this? How do our minds function? What's going on? Uh, why are we doing this to ourselves? Why am I doing this to myself? So unpause, we're back in this co-created reality. So once we've taken the time to drop in, to connect with and do some healing with the part of us that's been wounded and gotten triggered, you know, like take care of it. We've got some alarms going off. We've got some hard feelings. And once we are resourced, and have bandwidth to be curious, to look at a bigger picture, to be willing to let go of our attachment to these negative thoughts and feelings that we've made up based on the past, we can be curious what actually is going on. What is the bigger perspective? I don't want to put all my eggs in the basket of this really negative stuff uh, that I use to fill in the blanks of all the pieces that I don't know about. Once we get curious, then we have access to expand upon that limited myopic narrative that we had put together by our wounded and programmed self. So these wounds are actually looking for opportunities to get noticed to get really loud, to get really big, to get really painful because they're actually trying to get our attention. It's very much like um, if you cut your finger, you know, it's important that you take care of it. That's why it hurts. It hurts to signal yourself, oh, I did something. I need to clean that up. I need to maybe put some salve on it. I should put a Band-Aid on it. I need to take care of this. Emotional wounding is the same. We don't 
fully process, metabolize, take care of it in the moment, which often doesn't happen when we're children experiencing trauma. It just gets shoved aside and we do our best to deal with it. And it's operating, it's showing up in our lives, it's limiting how we think about ourselves and the world around us. It is in play in a subconscious level. And those triggers are actually a beautiful gift that make it get really loud, like a cut finger or a bashed shin. You know, you ran into the bed frame again. Oh, that hurt. I need to take care of that, right? I need to pay attention to this. So that trigger comes up and we often, the thing that happens in this moment of the trigger is like that trigger comes up and we believe the bullshit of the trigger. You know, we believe the past is happening again and we fill in all these negative blanks and we let the trigger take over. But the trigger doesn't want to take over. The, all the trigger wants is for us to notice it and take care of it, to notice it and to heal it, to notice it and l bring love and healing towards it. But the only language it has is the pain and suffering that it's in. It's like, um, if you know the I am Groot, you know, that little creature, all it can say is I am Groot. All this, whatever, all the abandonment, all the, yeah, just say it's an abandonment wound. All that wound can do when it's finally like been activated, it's like, all right, it's time to heal this. This has gotten triggered. Now I need your help. I need attention. I need love. I need you to show up for me. I need to know I'm safe. I need to know I'm cared for. Um, but our conscious self, like somehow is lost in this victim mentality, like, oh no, this is happening to me again. We like let that trigger, like dictate reality to us. And it doesn't want, it doesn't want to do that. It's like, take care of me. It's saying I'm in pain and suffering. So take care of me. So the elevation ship approaches, all right, I'm going to take care of this. I'm not going to be like, you did this to me you're bad uh you made me feel this way it's like oh i'm i'm actually the one that needs to take care of this because the pain is right here this is where the pain and suffering is so it's housed inside of me my body mind spirit consciousness complex so i'm the one that has to bring the healing to it i need to show up so there are many ways to show up and do this inner work. I have an approach called subconscious success repatterning that brings the conscious self with loving kindness, with compassion, with curiosity towards those places that are wounded and like speaking loudly and causing a lot of pain and, and chaos in the emotional energetic field to bring that loving kindness and listen like oh what's going on yeah I hear you're upset how can I take care of you and we bring resources and deep healing to that part of ourselves so that it can do a layer of healing Does, do we get all the way to the depths of it in one go usually not usually there are layers of this but it gets a layer of healing that helps it to feel some long term deep relief. And when we get in the habit of showing up and responding that way, like, oh, I got triggered just now. I need to take care of that. Oh, I just got triggered. I need to take care of that. We get used to responding in that way. And then that trigger becomes quiet. It becomes loved and healed. And then we have some greater insight about Hey, what, what do I actually need? Like this person or this experience triggered me. Do I have a request? Are there some boundaries I need to create or reinforce? Is there something I need to ask of this other person or let them know? Um, I found in my own reality, I, I don't know the percentages anymore, but a lot of times I can get triggered at something that it's like, oh, that's perfectly understandable. That person didn't do anything wrong. That person didn't do anything that they would have known was going to trigger me as just a sensitivity on my part. 
I'm grateful that I got this opportunity to look at myself more fully and do some deep healing. Yay. Thanks for that. I got to do some healing, empower myself, step outside of the blame game, be more free, be more full of love and kindness, and to take care of some old wounding that was long overdue in getting the love. Um, that's the basic elevation ship approach. And I'll, I'll use a little example. I hope this is not too um, confusing. I'm using like A and B as the names of people. So imagine two people in a relationship. Both of them have abandonment wounding. Okay. Person A makes a lunch date with a friend. Person B gets triggered because they weren't invited. This causes B agitation. And then they start to get critical, passive aggressive, and maybe even suspicious of A and interacting them in, in, with them in ways that are really unpleasant and kind of harsh. A feels that, feels the aggression, feels like you're, what is going on? You're treating me like I'm doing something wrong. You seem like you're angry. Like what is happening? And this lack of love, this harshness creates a disconnect from A and then maybe triggers A's abandonment issues. Like here I am just living my life, you know, doing the thing, loving my partner. And all of a sudden they're being really kind of mean towards me. They took the love away and now I'm feeling abandonment issues. And that makes me feel very scared. And maybe A runs away when they feel abandonment issues. So, oh, I've already got this lunch scheduled. I'm just going to take an extra long time with my friend. I'm going to get the love from my friend. I'm going to avoid coming home and spending time with B because B is being a B. <laughs> a B is a B. Um, and then that triggers partner B even more because they're feeling even more abandoned. Man, I was needing the love i was they are a has already left me alone and gone on this lunch and you know made me feel uh like they don't love me like they don't like me and now they've been gone like four hours no contact they didn't tell me where you know it was going to be this long so now it's even more upsetting at their core both a and b want to feel loved they both want to connect with the other. They want to feel cared for. But B has driven A away because of their own wounding and response to their wounding and unconscious behavior. And they don't even realize that they have played a major role in this bigger disconnect. So both A and B are feeling abandoned both are feeling criticized victimized excuse me both are feeling victimized and both of them are hurt so with an elevation ship approach say a makes that lunch date b gets triggered starts to realize oh i'm feeling agitated i'm feeling upset i'm going to take a moment to drop in and look at what's going on in here. Like here's a program, here's a movie starting to play out that's a really unpleasant movie. I'm gonna tune in and see what's going on. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm listening, I'm feeling, oh yeah, there's that fear in my heart that I'm being abandoned. What's actually happening? My partner's going on a lunch date. Are they actually abandoning me? No, I just, feel that way. Um, what can they do about it? I'm going to just talk to them, tell them, you know, how I'm feeling in a loving, kind and vulnerable, honest way. Hey, you know, um, you're going to lunch. Uh, that's great. I'm sure you're going to have a great time. I just wanted to share with you. Um, I'm, I felt like some agitation, some like upset feelings. And when I dropped in, I realized that um, there's this fear of abandonment, like that you didn't invite me to go with you because you don't love me. And I'm sure that's not the case, but I could really use some reinforcement right now. I'm just feeling 
really triggered. That feels so much more connective. A is like, wow, I had no idea this vulnerability and honesty brings out the compassionate side of A. And A is able to care like, oh, babe, I love and care for you. A could say, you know what, you can come to lunch with us or well, this is, you know, my friend really wants to talk about something that's very personal. Um, but, you know, how can I support you? Like, what do you need to feel supported? Then these two people are now on each other's side. They are connected. They are intimately connected. There's compassion flowing. There's, um, they can both work on a solution together. B can make requests. You know, um, would you just like call me, let me know when you're coming home. Uh, I'd like to have some time to connect with you when you get home. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to journal about this um, to just kind of get some greater insights. And I'd love to share it with you and just get some extra cuddles from you when you get back. Perfect. Awesome. Um, this is what can happen with the elevation ship approach. And this is what can happen when we recognize we are co-creating and our feelings are not somebody else's fault. Our feelings are our feelings. And since they're happening inside of us, we are the primary caretakers. We are the primary person that's responsible. We're the first responders, right? We have to be the first responders to our own hard feelings. So that hopefully was helpful. I hope that was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I do have a free copy of Elevation Ship. Um, you can get a free e-copy that you read online that's free. I also have, I think, like five more. Uh, free audible copies that you can listen in for free. It is from audible and they do ask that you make that you write a review in exchange. So um, if you would like a free audible copy and are willing to write, hopefully a five star review for me would be great, but um, write an honest review. Um, then please reach out to me. I'll give that to the first five people. And the sooner you write that review, the sooner Audible will give me more free copies to give to other folks. So, um, but either way, you can get a free copy of Elevation Ship. It's a book I wrote, quick read about how to replace conflict with greater intimacy. It's been very, very helpful for myself, for me and my relationship. It's been really, really helpful to the couples that my partner and I work with and um, friends and family that have read it have given it thumbs up, five star reviews, a lot of positive feedback. So um, I highly encourage you to check it out. There are a couple of guides at the back. One is a personal trigger breakthrough guide so that when you do get triggered, you can pull that baby out and go through the, I think it's an eight step, very simple eight step process to walk yourself through a trigger so that you can come through on the other side, a lot more resourced, a lot more available for elevating, for creative and high vibe problem solving um, that does deep healing with those triggers. Like if you're going to get triggered, let's make the most out of it. Let's turn it into like an opportunity to go up an octave right next time around. So thanks for tuning in. Got the love, gla love glasses on, looking at the world through the eyes of love, hoping that you can join me in that. And uh, again, sending all kinds of love your way until we get to connect again. May the source be with you.